So in this video, we're going to have a little walkthrough of implementing a different diff uh, estimation in R. We'll use a little artificial data set, which is sort of very simple to illustrate what we what we are going to do. Before we go to R, let's uh, look at what we're going to do. Clearly, this isn't an introductory video for diff and diff. So if you don't know what diff and diff is, this isn't worth continuing. So let's have a, a look at what we're gonna what we are going to do here. We're having an outcome variable. We have that here. Okay. That's our YST. It has two indices S for you could think of a state or individuals and T for the time. And we are estimating a model, which is sometimes called the two-way fixed effects model, two-way fixed effects. And why is that called like that? Because for both the cross-sectional and the time series dimension, we're basically introducing dummy variables. That here is the fixed effects for each individual or each state, whatever that S represents, a unit of observation. In our case, we're having four periods of time so what we are also doing here is introducing time dummy variables. Okay, these are the time dummies. And that's the second way because it's called two way fixed effects. These are the time fixed effects. Note that, of course, we are leaving out the, uh, the first time period, which is our base period. And then so this, these two elements here are the two way fixed effects element. And then we have here this variable. We have a variable ds. This is sometimes we call that the ever treated dummy variable. So all units that are part of the treatment group have a one in the ds variable. All others have a zero. And then we have a time dummy pt, which takes a value one in the post treatment period. Okay, that is basically the three times post variable you will you will often you will often see. Now the way how this is uh, how this is modeled here that is we call that model R. Okay, we are having four periods. Let's say one, two, three, four. In our example, the treatment starts from period three onwards. And what basically this model allows us to do is it, it says, okay, we're having a zero policy effect before the treatment. And then after the treatment, we're having a policy effect of size tau. Okay, so let's say here we get a policy effect and basically that sort of difference is represented by tau. Right? So that's the policy effect we are estimating with this model. Of course, what we are assuming here, there's parallel trends uh, in the series and we're having the same policy effect for all units and for all times and that is estimated by tau. So what does model u do? So we will be estimating that model, but we will also be estimating model u. So what does model U do? Let us just do this. I have this little timeline again. So we're here looking at one, two, three, and four periods. And again, the treatment happens between period two and three. So three and four are treatment periods. One and two are pre-treatment periods. And what we now do, is the following. So we still have these fixed effects, okay, both for time and uh, individuals or units of observation states, individuals. But now instead of that one policy effect, what we are now having, and let me use a different color is, we're having, basically we're estimating three policy effects, a W2 and uh, let me use black for that, a tau 3 and a tau 4. Now, what does that do? 
it basically relaxes the assumption that your policy effect is homogeneous through time. It basically estimates a period three and a period four policy effect. That's the tau three. That one here will be tau three. That one here will be tau four. But it also estimates this omega two. Okay, this guy here. And that basically is a an estimate here. Right? So that difference here, that is going to be omega 2. Now, why is that useful? Well, that is useful because it will allow you to say something sensible about the parallel trends assumptions. Parallel trends assumption is an assumption we cannot really test because it assumes that in the absence of treatment, all treated unit would have sort of policy effects of zero in the post treatment period. This one tells us something about the pre treatment period, but you would expect if there was parallel trends, you would expect this guy to be zero, okay, to be close enough, not statistically significantly different from zero. Okay, and again, we can't include the first effect to avoid the, um, the dummy variable trap. So this is what this extended model u does or u for unrestricted model. And you want to look at the omega two to say, you know, it does that can help you to suggest that your parallel trends assumptions is fine because before the treatment period, you may observe parallel trends. That's if that is equal to zero. And then the uh, tau three and four tell you something about the policy effect and allow you to model a potentially time varying policy effect. Perhaps the policy only kicks in after a few periods. If you had more pre policy period, so if you had more periods here, you would still estimate an effect for each period, but for the very first in your sample. Okay, so you may have several omega omegas for the pre uh, treatment period, and you would hope to support your parallel trends assumption, you would want them all to be statistically insignificant from zero. All right, so how do we get these terms? Well, the variables we are including are these. Okay, it's the ds that was the ever treated, ds was ever treated as up here, times the year dummy. F2t is a dummy for the second period. Then here we have ds, the ever treated dummy, times the dummy for year three, and here ds, the ever treated dummy, times the dummy for year four. That these are the variables which we include here. Okay, and we do that instead of that ds times pt. All right, so with that under our belt, let's go to the data and let's implement this in R. Here we go. So we're having we're importing all sorts of uh, packages, which we want amongst others, uh, the standard ones, tidyverse, ggplot, stargazer, because it gives us nice regression outputs, uh, haven to import a stata file, because our data are in stata format, ggplot, AER for standard errors, PLM for panel methods, sandwich for cluster robust standard errors, and coref plot. Uh, we need for a nice plot later. Okay, so let's just run all this. And then let's import the data. And that's what they are called in the folder where they are for me. It's a data file. So we're using, uh, sorry, we're using read underscore DTA. So here's our data file. And I'll just make sure it's a data frame. Let's look at our data file. So we're having ID, cross-sectional identifiers, we're having years, okay, these are data from 2012 to 2015, four years of data. We're having an outcome variable, a log value for the outcome variable. Then we are having a W, we'll, we'll look at the, actually, we'll look at the others by looking at a particular, uh, at a particular um, observation in a moment. Before we look at that in more detail, let's do a few things. Let's look at 
str uh, the structure of our data frame so here we can see our structure and you can see these are all numerical variables now many of them are categorical variables and let's let r know that these are categorical variables so we'll do a number of things just have that we'll we'll create the year into a factor so categorical variables the w the d i haven't talked about the w yet we get to that in a moment the d and i'll change the levels how we call the d categories into control and treated okay and oh yeah the id we also turn into a factor into a categorical variable so let's do all of this all right the next thing we're going to do is we we will be telling R that we are dealing with a panel data set. OK, so what. What we do here is we're calling the P data dot frame the panel data frame option or function, and we're telling R well take our data from data turn it into a panel data set and your indices are in the ID variable and in the year variable. Okay, so let's run that. And we have a new data set. It has, of course, the same dimension, 2052 observations, 11 variables. But now R knows that we are dealing with a, a panel data frame. And if you're dealing with panel data, you do want to know whether it's a balanced data frame so you have the same number of periods for all uh, for all your individuals we use the is dot p balanced function and you can see the outcome down here is true yes it's a balanced data set okay so let's also look at these variables w and d we already said d is the ever treated variable so we're having the summary for w and d so d you can see we're having 536 observations for treated objects and 1516 observations for non-treated objects now of course we know we are having 2000 2052 observations but for each observation, we have four years of data. So how many, let's see, how many individuals do we have? We're having 513 individuals. Okay. And, sorry. Yes. Okay. We're having 513 uh, individuals of which, and this is the W, So we are having 513 individuals here. Now, what is the W? To understand what the W is, we will look at a particular observation. I'll put that down here in the command. So we're picking one observation, 35991, and we are looking at the year WD and post. So let's run this. Okay, so here we have a we have our our table and you see that what we have for this obs observation this belongs to the treatment group okay the d variable the ever treated is just treated for all four periods we are having four observations for that individual 2012 to 2015 and the post period it's just the second two periods. That's the same for all observations. That's a time dummy, the post. And you see here the W variable. That is basically post times treated. Okay, post times D. And that will take a value one in the periods in which someone is treated. 
and zero otherwise. Let's see whether we can pick another uh, another observation. Let me find a, an ID, for instance, um, ID 13. So we're now looking at observation 13. And here what you can see is the post stays the same. Control, in this case, this uh, individual 13 is part of the control group. So that W variable will be zero always. Okay, that W variable takes value of one for treated units in the periods they are treated. So that's what the W is. Okay, so let's go back to, uh, to our code. Let us estimate model R. Okay. Estimate model R. There we go. So here's the code we need for this. Let me briefly go through it. Let's quickly look back here. What do we need for model R? We need the individual dummies. These are all dummies, one dummy for each individual. We need the time dummies. And then we need the ever treated D times post. So that's what we that's what we need. So here's our model. We're going to the panel data using the LM model. Now let's look at this first. And our dependent variable is the log y. And then our explanatory variables are the ID, the year. These are this, these are the two fixed effects. And then W, because W is just D times post. Okay, as we saw down here, that's exactly what we want. These are the variables. And if ID and year are factor variables, as they are in our case, because we created, we turned them into factor variables here, then R knows that it should include a dummy variable for each individual outcome. So let's run this. Okay, and we could, of course, now just let me just type summary model one down here. You can get a regression summary. If you do that, well, you're getting an awful lot of coefficients because each individual here gets its own uh, dummy variable. Okay, and says, well, I can't even print out all the things, but we are not really interested in all the individuals, we're interested in basically the coefficient to the W variable, because that's our policy outcome. So we're gonna look at that in a moment. Also, when you just use LM in R, what you get is standard errors, which are not heteroscedar cysti robust or cluster robust. We look at that in a moment. So let's take care of that in the next step as well. If you want heteroscedar cysti robust standard errors, so there's a way to do that in R. There are possibly several ways. This is sort of a, a fairly basic way to do it, perhaps not the most intuitive, but it it's sort of relies on as few packages as possible. Um, the package we need here is the AER pack package. So we are calculating a variance covariance matrix for model one. So the results of model one, we are feeding in here for model one. And the type of variance covariance we want to estimate is a heteroscedar cysti robust standard error. So we use type HC1. Okay, of course, um, if you want any details, you should uh, look at the help function. Okay, which uh, will be here and you get all sorts of details or of course you can uh, use your friend Dr. Google. So that will create a variance covariance matrix with heteroscedastic um, heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. And then we only want the standard errors not the whole matrix so that's why we are taking the diagonal so what we get is variance estimates but we want the standard errors, therefore we take a square root of that. Okay? That's what the whole thing does. So once we run this, we in mod row SE, we are getting a vector with 517 values because we are having 517 coefficient estimates. So for each of our many coefficient estimates, we get a standard error. 
So in terms of outputting the result, we're using the uh, Stargazer package because it gives you a really nice uh, regression output. And actually, I don't need that bit anymore. We're taking model one. We only want to show the output for the W variable. So that's what the keep does. We don't want to see all these uh, dummy uh, coefficients for the dummies. We'll do the type text that works well here. And then for the standard errors, you can tell Stargazer what standard errors to use. And we are sending in these standard errors, which we just calculated. You have to put them in a list. Uh, we only want six digits and we are adding some notes to the bottom that these are heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. So let's run this. And here we have our nice table. We're looking at our policy estimate 0.185929. It's a lock point estimator. This is statistically significant using our heteroscedasticity robust standard errors. So often as if you're looking at different diff implementations, what you want to do is you want to estimate cluster robust standard errors. So acknowledging here that for each individual, we have four observations and that these standard errors may be correlated. So we want uh, cluster robust standard errors. Let us implement those. Okay. Um, we don't have to re-estimate the model. We just need different standard errors. So what we do is we, instead of this call to estimate heteroscedasticity robust standard errors, we're going to make a new call. And now I call the mod one CR for cluster robust standard errors. And we use a different function here, variance covariance matrix CL for cluster robust standard errors. We feed in our model one you have to tell that VCOF CL function, and again, you can use the help function to get details according to which variable to cluster. We want to cluster according to the ID variable. And otherwise the same, we're taking the diagonal and then the square root to get the standard error. So let's uh, run this line. You see we have again a vector of 517 standard errors in our environment now. And now we are calling Stargazer again, basically exactly the same. Just now we're using the cluster robust standard errors and we make that reflect in our node as well. So let's run this. And what you can see is perhaps we can compare that here. Yeah, so we have the same estimate because we didn't change anything about the estimate, but the standard error has changed somewhat. It is somewhat larger now, okay, than this one. So this is the standard error you should use. Of course, issues with cluster robust standard errors, you need a lot of units according to which you cluster. Typically one says at least 50. We have more than 500, so we are fine here. All right. This is how we estimated um, our restricted model. Recall what we have estimated is this model, this restricted model. And we have estimated that the effect of the policy effect here, in our case, was 0 0.186, I think, approximately. Okay. So that was the size of the effect, assuming that the effect is constant in periods three and four. Let us now estimate model U, the unrestricted, the unrestricted model. So let's see more of the code. And we now want to estimate U. Here we go. And here is the code. Let's deconstruct it, actually. Yeah. Uh, we got a bit of code, which is important. Here we go. So remember, what we need is we need these variables here, the treatment times the year treatment dummy times the year dummies. OK, all but the first year. Because we want to use these variables instead of the W variable, which was treatment times post. So let's create these variables in R. 
and this is where we do this okay we are taking our p data frame and we're mutating it using tidyverse language means we're creating three new variables let's call them d2013 um d2014 d2015 and actually let me just change that because i know there was a slight let's call them treatment 2013 treatment to your so treated dummy times the year dummy okay and how for instance the treatment 2013 is takes a value of one or true if the year is 2013 and the individual is treated then treatment 2014 is takes a value of one if the year is 2014 and the individual is treated and so forth so let's run this so we've added that we now have 14 variables three more and now let's run that model okay i have to change the names here so what are we going to do we're still including the two-way fixed effects the individual dummies and the year dummies but now instead of including then the w which is treatment times post we are now including treatment 2013 treatment 2014 treatment 2015 the variables which we just created so let's run this model that works without a hitch so we call that here model 3 and let's calculate standard errors we do that here in that line for model 3 cluster robust standard errors for model 3 that's all fine QF keep here I'll just create a list of the um, variables I want to show okay and I want to show the est uh, coefficient estimates for the year dummies and then for these three effects treatment 2013 treatment 2014 treatment 2015 remember what we're estimating here are this omega 2 tau 3 and tau 4 these will be the three uh, dummy variables. That's the coefficient to treatment 2015, that's the coefficient to treatment 2014, and that to treatment 2013. And the initial year we leave out to avoid a dummy variable trap. So we got our standard errors. We want to keep we want to show only the coefficients to these uh, terms and let's call stargazer okay and here's our result our output so what do you see here let me copy that across So let's put that here. All right. So here's our regression output. So what you can see here is this term here, W2 is this one. Omega, sorry, Omega2 is this one. Tau3 is this and Tau4 is this. And what you can see, remember what we, what we said these coefficients and here we only have one because we only have two pre-policy periods if you had five pre-policy periods you would have four of these coefficients we want that to be zero and as you can see here the estimate coefficient and the standard error we have no asterisks here so that is statistically insignificant from zero so that gives you a and i'm being deliberately wake here that gives you a sort of a good vibe about the parallel trends assumptions because pre-policy the trends are parallel if there weren't we would have a significant coefficient here then what about the policy effects tau 3 and tau 4 here we are getting 0.18 very similar to what we what we had here 
okay, and 0 0.17 or rounded to 0 0.18. So these two effects here are actually very similar. Okay, so the policy seems to have impacted immediately and with pullback. Okay. The last thing I want to show in R is how we can sort of fairly nicely display these coefficients. And we can do that with the uh, uh, coefficient plot function, which comes from the core of plot uh, package. So we're here, we're taking the coefficients of our model three send them to the core of plot functions. Which coefficients do you want to show? Well, the coefficients in uh, core of keep. And here they are. Once I run this line, we are getting this little plot. Let's just look at it. You're getting your three coefficients. You're getting the first one. You're getting the first one, and we see that that first coefficient is basically you're seeing the confidence interval. Okay, that's the coefficient estimate that was omega two, and that's the confidence interval for omega two. There, are, I think, ninety five percent confidence intervals. You can check the core of plot function details, and you you can see it. Uh, it's around zero. So that's not statistically significant. Whereas the two policy estimates, tau 3 and tau 4, their confidence intervals is clearly above the zero line. So they are statistically significant. Uh, it's just a very nice plot. We sometimes call this the events uh, event study type plot. Um, ideally, you would have a zero here also for the period 2012. Because, but I don't know how to manipulate the core of plot function to show that. So that was really a just brief run through uh, the, so it was a brief run through estimating diff and diff in R. I will link uh, the code file and uh, with a bit more information and the data file from below the notes.